So this is a little bit different than my uh, usual video with consumer companies. We're talking about uh, the enterprise space today, uh, particularly business intelligence. And we have uh, Burst here, who's competing with uh, big boys like Oracle and SAP. And we're gonna talk about why a company needs what they're doing and, and how they're different, bringing uh, business intelligence to the cloud. So I'm Brad Peters, Chief Product Officer and Chairman of Burst. Um, been in the technology space for a long time, been doing analytics for uh, over 10 years, and uh, been actually in this enterprise software space for a long time. Shipped my first product on the Tandy TRS-80 in 1980, and uh, have been in the software space ever since. Yeah. So uh, the business intelligence space isn't something I, I usually spend a lot of time talking about. This is for enterprises. It's expensive. It's not a $20 a month thing. It's, you know, it's well, some of the big guys were actually relatively inexpensive. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's the space you're in, yep. right? Yep. And that's why I had you in, because that, I wanted to understand what is going on in the tech industry uh, across the industry, not just uh, you know what the coolest uh, Snapchat thing is, right? So, yeah, well, I mean, what we're seeing right now, this replatforming of, of enterprises to the cloud. You know, cloud for certain applications that were maybe less strategic, they moved more quickly. Other things like business intelligence and analytics, where it's your corporate enterprise data, they've been a little bit more conservative to move to the cloud. Um, but in the last year and a half, two years, we've seen tremendous uh, embrace by organizations, big, small. I mean, cloud's certainly doing very well in the mid market uh, and, and smaller organizations, but even large companies now saying, hey, look, you know, do I really want to be in the plumbing business? Do, why don't I focus on business value and, and, and productivity? And that's where cloud solutions, which kind of have that, uh, have the application already engineered for delivery and deployment built in, it's much easier to install, much easier to use. That stuff's way more compelling and, uh, and we're seeing a lot of large organizations say, hey, you know, we're ready. Let's, yeah. let's go do it. So you're aimed at enterprises. You're a little mm -hmm. tiny startup with three three guys like out of here in Geekdom probably uh, doesn't need you yet, right? You know, BI in general is it's all about getting scale around your use of data. So for really small companies, they're probably fine with Excel. But once you get to maybe a hundred employees, and all of a sudden, you know that work you do in Excel isn't quite so easy to maintain, and you're kind of doing a lot of work every day reproducing the same stuff. That's when BI starts to get really powerful because it's now doing all of that analysis work for you in an automated way on a day-to-day -day basis. So you can come in and have a dashboard that shows you all the key metrics for your business. And if you see something that's not looking right, you can kind of drill in and find out what was wrong and, and, and fix it, which would be very difficult to do if you're just trying to munch spreadsheets together and, and, and do stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah. Where, what's the first team in an in a enterprise to usually try, try this stuff and, and uh, put it to use? Um, it depends. Uh, you know, we, we work in data-rich organizations, so uh, that that have where the value of a decision is high. And I know that sounds uh, vague, but the whole purpose of business intelligence is we give data to an employee, and if that employee can change their decision as a result of that data and do something better, we can drive value. So we like to say, um, you know, some ways you can grow. You can hire ten percent more employees, or you can take the, the employees you have and make them ten percent more effective. Analytics is the only broadly uh, consumable enterprise software that can make your employees generally more effective without having to hire more people. So we see it, sales for sure, it's a very data rich thing, you want to know what's going on to the minute. We see it marketing, a lot of, lot of new data sources in marketing, manufacturing, supply chain, operations, finance, um, anywhere where you're trying to understand the operating characteristics of a particular business function. If you bought an enterprise application, you probably need BI. Yeah. So let's, we have a sales team here at uh, Rackspace, so I can relate to that. Cool. What would we do with this, and, and what kinds of data sources uh, get ingested by you in so, our first deployment? So that's, uh, you know, sales organizations are always trying to figure out how they're doing, and, you know, they get graded on how much they sold at the end of the quarter, but they're trying to figure out every day, every week, how they're tracking. And the challenge with most systems like, say, uh, your CRM system is it's going to tell you what deals you're working on right now and you may have 100 deals that you're working on today. And at the end of the week, you probably have 100 deals you're working on today. And so that's great. We 
that's kind of like the odometer in your car. It tells you how far you've gone. But you want to know the speedometer. You want to know how fast you're moving. So you want to know for those 100 deals that you started out the week with, what happened to those? How many of those did you win? How many of those did you lose? Where did you lose? You know, uh, where are you succeeding? And figure out where the holes are so you can take action. Um, and that's the kind of analysis that, that BI and, and, and Burst really helps make, uh, make, make possible. The other thing we look at is you know, segments and things like you know, which types of campaigns am I doing and, and how are those campaigns turning into specific closed deals because you're spending a lot of money talking to a lot of people. Are you wasting time? Are you getting value out of time? How do you, how do you get more efficient in doing that? And for a big organization like Rackspace or a bigger organization, you want to you, you want to be able to measure that and, and find trends. Yeah, can we see what it looks like just so we have some context? Sure. And, sure. and what are we about to see? So uh, we're going to show you something that's actually not business related because we want to make it broadly approachable to folks here. But uh, for those folks and and trying to make it as global as possible, so we actually took the World Cup uh, a World Cup data set for the last. Uh, a uh, few years to, to try to answer some basic questions about and, and show how we can look at a data set and, and, and spot trends and patterns and those sorts of things. So one of the things uh, we're looking at here is our visual, visualizer tool which helps you uh, take different pieces of a data set and, and visualize it. So um, if I want to understand shots on goal for example and see if there's anything interesting going on there I can just click on shots on goal and search for something like you know year, trends, time. And Burst will just lay that out, and you can instantly see in the World Cup data set right here that, holy cow, in the last few years, people are shooting a lot more. Um, that's interesting, and, and that's probably more than you would know just by looking at you know, each year one by one, but now you want to understand the trend. So let's look at that split by another dimension. Let's try to see, um, let's, let's lay that out, out by region or something like that. So let's just throw a region on there, um, let it split that out in pieces, and what Burst did there for a second is it helped guide you to figure out different ways you can lay that out to try to make that more visually rich. So here you can see each region laid out over time, and you can visually see a couple different dimensions simultaneously. You can see some regions like North America are shooting a lot, and some yeah. regions aren't. And okay, that's interesting, but uh, how are they doing it? On, is, that's a lot. That's that's in aggregate. How about on average? Well, okay, in average, yep, yeah, they're still shooting a lot. Um, how does that relate to winning? So if I just type in, you know, winning, can I can I further visualize the data and maybe, you know, Burst will help point me to some ways I can arrange the data to to make it more explainable. But throwing it on a chart right there, I can now see how how uh, clubs are winning versus how they're shooting over time, and you can see that maybe some of the ones that shoot the most don't win the most, but certainly the ones that shoot the least certainly win the least. And it's a broad mix of you, you want to shoot more. That's definitely good, and 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 uh, you know. Uh, in Europe, you're seeing a, a blend of shooting and, um, but not going over the top, and yeah. it's kind of kind of cool just from a really simple data set right there. And this is all on the cloud, so you don't install any software like exactly. with, with your competitors. You have uh, a lot of installing to do. Oh yeah, and in fact, um, one of the cool things about the cloud is we put all this stuff together in one package. Um, some of the legacy vendors, the big guys with the the, the shorter names, they tend to uh, you know have a whole bunch of different products you got to put together yourself. So you're not just installing one thing, you're installing something for your database for things like ETL and data warehousing and reporting and dashboarding and all that stuff. So it makes, it makes you're building a 747 each time you want to see a chart like that. With the cloud, with Burst, you have the opportunity to kind of go do the whole thing end to end, plunk some data in and, 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 and get to a business result uh, all in one spot. So I, from that time I de decide to pay you some money and get, get you guys in, the deployment time, I bet, is shorter than the, what the other guys? Oh, dramatically shorter than the, the yeah. enterprise guys. I mean, our, our goal was to say, hey, look, you should be able to do with one guy at, you know, working on Burst in a month what it would take a team of five to seven using SAP or Oracle in a year. So, um, and that may be a stretch in certain cases, but generally we see dramatic productivity uh, in, in enhancements. And the idea is, you know, for really simple things, you can be, you can have stuff up and running in hours. And if you want to look at whole organizations, that may take you a bit longer. And we typically see folks start small and then, and then just grow. Does this work on iPad and all the usual mobile tools? Yep, yep. You kind of don't have a choice these days. Um, executives prefer the mobile devices. Clearly, they want to understand, and they're usually looking at summary information on mobile devices. Yeah. Analysts generally prefer the larger real estate of a of a real laptop or a, 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 a real computer. Um, well, a CEO is probably answering email in, a car, in an Uber car uh, on the way to the airport. Exactly, exactly. Well, oh, I see that something's wrong, clicking a button and send an email. Yeah. 
I'm um, traveling less and less with a laptop and more and more with a tablet and with a phone, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And then you want it to email you too. And when, when there's, an, so you want the system also to be smart in the background, looking for stuff for you and sending you alerts if something's off. You yeah. know, and, and we want to do that too. A, a lot of companies now. Uh, well, in their network operations system, they have these big screens, but so sometimes executive offices have these big screens, mm -hmm. and so it's so sort of we. show the uh, health of the company, right? Uh, yep. Printing for Less had uh, actually a dashboard everybody started up on in the morning. Do you help companies build those things and decide what, what should you be showing every day to everybody walking in the door? It's a bit, so there's what you give to individuals, because some, sometimes you want to give each person a personalized view of the data, so you, you don't want to necessarily make that in, pu in public in front of the entire organization, like a, in a sales org, you, the guy in the east shouldn't be seeing the guy in the west's data necessarily. Yeah. But for certain organizations, maybe a call center, and you want to you know, show how, how the, the org's doing and, and uh, show how they've been doing in the last 30 minutes or hour, whatever it is, we'll help them figure out you know, how to take that data and summarize it and present it. And, and show it in, in real time or near real time so they can, you know, it, it's a motivational factor as much as anything else. It's, yeah. it's, it's fun. I, I assume you uh, ingest most common data sets. Uh, are there any that you don't yet do? Or, uh, you know, we have, uh, so in order to do analytics, you have to structure data. I mean, you, in order to sum something, it has to be structured. So ultimately, we're dealing with structured data sets. But um, we have connectors and things to unstructured data sets that structure it on its way in. So we'll connect to Hadoop. and. Um, various NoSQL infrastructure uh, so that you can build analyzable data sets in front of these things and, and, and give your business users ways to browse that, that unstructured pool. So um, I think if it, once we get structure on it, we can do pretty much anything with it. Yeah. Is there anything that uh, because you're in the cloud you can do that the other guys don't do? Lots of things. Um, a big one is reach. So if you're if you've got a lot of distributed offices, you're global, and any sort of and the cloud is absolutely ideal for that. The other thing is we're more elastic in our ability to deploy resources. We also can. What does that mean? I want to load more data. I can actually add more resources to my instance to support that. Uh, most of the on-premise guys, you, you're putting in hardware and you're installing it. You're installing it, and you, every time you want to do something new, it's another installation. Most of the on-premise guys we see, literally, you know, I, want, I have a dev instance, um, that's one stack. I have a production instance, that's another stack. Yeah. And in Burst, we virtualize that. So, so there's a maintenance uh, cost advantage here. Absolutely. Because I don't have to have a team running a data center. Well, the infrastructure, so think of it as an accidental data warehouse. You kind of didn't really, you, you don't have to worry about the plumbing for that. Um, do you guys take charge a monthly fee then? Or, uh, so yeah. you charge me up front, you know, something in the tens of thousands, and then you charge me. No, we're fee. generally not. There's generally not an upfront. I mean, if you uh, want our services to help you, we'll you know you pay as you go for that. But no, it's a subscription. There's okay. uh, you know, our, our licensed brethren um, like to get as much cash up front and then not support you as much. We're much more aligned with our customers where we don't succeed if you don't succeed. So um, we're we're very aligned financially with our customers. What, uh, when you sit down with a customer for the first time, what kinds of things are they asking for? And, and, and what, what, so it's what interesting. makes your tool shine, it, it, it depends. Well, yeah. we, we, shine, we shine in particular because we, we tried to take a lot of the, the industry knowledge around data warehousing and business intelligence and build automation around that. So there's books and books. You go to Amazon, there's tons and tons of books. And so we actually built that that logic into software, which is sounds novel, but that's it's not the low level stuff that you would traditionally do. Our software is a bit higher level and more abstract, so it makes you more productive. But some organizations we deal with have experience with data, so they know exactly what they want. They have, hey look, I just want to do it with Burst because it's five times faster. Other organizations may they could never afford, you know, the Oracles or the SAPs. There's just no way they're going to have it. So they're maybe a little bit further da down on the learning curve. And so when they work with Burst, they might think, well, I had this stuff in Excel and I just want to duplicate it. Uh, or I got a bunch of data. Let's just go figure out how to, like, you know, do something with it. Um, and part of our process when we work with them is to help them think through, okay, let's step back for a second. What are you trying to measure in your business? What decisions can you actually influence by that measure? Because if you can't influence a decision, what's the point, right? And if you can drive a decision, then let's figure out what data you got and let's figure out who can use that information. But if we can figure those things out with you and that's part of our process, um, we can drive some real, real advantage. Yeah, when I, I was just at Facebook yesterday but I interviewed their uh, C CTO and uh, COO and um, they really drive every decision by data. It, when you hit a company like that, what, 
how is the conversation different than when you're dealing with somebody who is running everything on an Excel spreadsheet? You know, uh, Facebook's a bit of a unique animal in the sense that they like to develop a lot of stuff themselves. So most companies in the world generally aren't, you know, don't believe that building their own software is better than, you know, not, not that they always believe that, but um, in the Valley you do tend to see a, a little bit of a different beast. Um, you know, we're, our goal is to say, look, if you don't have racks and racks of, of developers, the, the whole BI industry is, is creating scalable, reproducible solutions for you to take your data and turn it into something useful. So for someone like that, we would, they already have an infrastructure, and you can think of Burst as kind of the last mile. They're going to put a ton of energy and effort into core data assets. They've got Hadoop all over the place. They've got a bunch of other stuff that, that, that's going on over there. Um, but they have a lot of business users that aren't probably getting the value out of that data. So something like Burst can tap into that existing data infrastructure and make it much more business user friendly. So it's that last mile. That's really what we do well for guys like that. Um, you know, so we're going to increase the utilization of that data. We're going to increase the value of that data, and we're going to spread it in the organization more broadly than they would get with kind of try to either do homegrown tools or some of the more narrow things they might get from some of the, the legacy or on-prem vendors. Yeah. There's still some companies that are freaked out about uh, putting their data on, onto a third party's uh, <laughs> servers, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you handle that objection? So we want to take religiosity out of the mix. Um, y y the interesting thing is that's changed dramatically in the last year and a half to two years. I mean, three, four years ago, it was it was. But even at total. Amazon, you know, our competitor. They have rules against uh, putting any data on a third-party cloud uh, computer, so, so, <laughs> which so, is really funny. So, so, <laughs> so, does, so does Salesforce. <laughs> Salesforce doesn't like using other cloud solutions. It's yeah. interesting. <laughs> um, uh, you know, but okay. So well, Salesforce uses Gmail at least for their Gmail. <laughs> so I know that. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I know that they bought into it at least at some bit. level. <laughs> yeah. um, so for us, you know, we actually said a couple years ago, look, our, our growth, our value is in cloudifying the software. So taking that, what used to be a bunch of different point solutions and, and putting a bubble around it so the whole thing was an end-to-end -end solution. It was much more pre-integrated. So whether you run that in our data center or you run that on-premise in your data center shouldn't really matter. So we actually launched a software appliance um, that can be deployed at folks like Rackspace and, and stuff like that, um, that many of our larger customers that aren't quite ready for, you know, philosophically for dealing with that yet. They just want to take that out of it. They'll start with that, or at least they think they'll start with that. And what's interesting, though, what we'll find is that they'll, they'll purchase with the intent to deploy in their own data center because the, the idea is, oh, well, you know, hardware's free. We've already got it. We've already got the people managing and monitoring all this stuff. But lo and behold, once they purchase it, they realize, well, you know, there is a procurement cycle, and I do have to hire more bodies, and I do have to staff for it. You know what? Let's just put it in Burst Cloud. because I've already, and, and by the way, the management is breathing down my neck to get some results out of this thing, so it actually is faster to just use the cloud to go do it. So we find that happens a lot. But um, we don't care. If you want to run it in a private cloud, you want to run a public cl cloud, we, we don't care. What else are you seeing happen in this space? I, you know, you're watching everything. I, I'm not very astute on the business intelligence space, but what, are, what else are you seeing we, happen? We see a war uh, between central data management, you know, the traditional IT building the big centralized data sets, and the end users who are buying all these cheap desktop tools to do visualization, whatever, on their desktop. And the two are kind of at odds uh, with each other. In, in, in the, you know, one is very controlled, but you can't get a lot of data into it or out of it very easily. You know, the idea is it's got to be perfect, data quality, all, you hear all these acronyms. And then the end users are going, you know, with Excel or some of these visualization tools, they're just going rogue with all sorts of stuff. And there's all sorts of wrong answers all over the place because, you know, you just because you get to pull a, a data set doesn't mean you're going to get the right thing. And I think there's this de endemic desire to try to pull those things together and that's really where the cloud has the greatest advantage because the cloud can sit on top of both of those things. It can provide a nice conduit to mix some stuff that people have on their desktop with stuff that might be managed by you know, IT and you can bring those things together. And that's really, I think that's where the, the future is going to go. Is, and that's the, really the reason cloud is going to completely disrupt this industry is you've had two camps and those camps don't have to, you know, uh, just because stuff exists on a desktop or on a server doesn't define how you use data. Well, the cloud can kind of bridge that gap. Yeah, it's really interesting. Tell me a little bit about your company. Uh, it, it's eight years old now. Right? It's eight years old. Uh, we started out, um, founders came out of Siebel Analytics, which became Oracle BI, the, the, you know, one, of the, one of the large players. And we, we kind of saw that that industry was gonna, was gonna transform in the same way CRM and 
financials and HR already kind of moved to the cloud. So we said, okay, hey, let's, let's put some infrastructure to, to go, go figure out how to make that work. Turns out this is really hard to do. Um, this isn't, you know, anybody who's sort of telling you that it's, it's brain dead easy and everybody who's been doing it for the last 30 years is wrong is probably lying to you. There's actually a, a lot more degrees of freedom, a lot more challenges to this problem than um, maybe CRM or some of those kinds of things. So as a result, it took a few more years of, of in really intense R&D for us to figure out how we could handle data from multiple sources that might have, might be five tables, might be 500 tables, it might be five rows, it might be five billion rows, um, and it might be five users or 5,000 users. When you kind of put all those together, it's a, it's a complex mix. And oh, by the way, all the data sources are different for each customer. Being able to support that is something that we've, we've spent five years you know, intense R&D getting to the software to the, where we could handle that. And it's really the last couple of years where we've been in the scaling part of the business. And um, last couple of years we've just been growing like crazy, triple digit growth every year and having I a lot bet. of fun. Yeah, this is the cool part. When people are finally saying, hey, cloud, you know, let's, we want to go with cloud for, for BI. That was not what they were saying yeah. three, four, five years ago. Nope. Nope, uh, it's fun now. It certainly is. Uh, how are you funded and how many employees do you have? So uh, we're funded by uh, venture capital principally. In fact, we share an investor with Rackspace, uh, Sequoia Capital. Yeah. Um, uh, and we're now a little over a couple hundred employees, uh, mostly North America, but we've got um, operations in uh, Northern Europe uh, and uh, um, uh, Asia Pac and, 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 and Australia. And we've got partners, about 80 global partners that also resell and implement our stuff all around the world. What's the challenge for scaling now at, at your level? You know, because you haven't done that previously, have you? Me personally, yeah. no, no. So, uh, so the challenge is bringing in talent to the organization who's done that before. And actually, one of the things we just did recently is I um, uh, was able to recruit a professional CEO to come in to work with me as my partner to help grow the business. I could focus on the products and solving the cool technical problems, and I could bring in somebody who's kind of done this before at places like Mercury and Success Factors and really grow and scale the business. And, uh, uh, you know, we're at that stage and we're, we're having a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming in. Where do cool. we learn more about it? Uh, www.burst.com. That's B I R S T. B I R S T. Very cool. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Appreciate it.